heard him last night. Yes. The first time I heard him, he was playing flamenco, Spanish guitar. Oh, okay. I wanted to be a photographer from early on, but the way my parents were, you know, if you weren't a lawyer or a priest or a social worker, if you weren't doing something to make America better, there was no value in your life. And so I became a social worker. A complicated question we often face in life is how do we balance our passions in the pursuit of big dreams with reality? Do you keep that structured nine to five job or give it all up for something less stable that fills your soul? Well, Jim Livingston thought he knew the answer, but despite spending years doing social work and legal work, it was photography that he fell in love with. Part of what happened was um, the social work that I did was largely in the mental health field and some real serious mental health issues, really serious schizophrenia, stuff like that. I had come to see America in a really dark light. I saw the worst parts of America. And um, I was becoming really cynical and jaded. And, so, and you realized this. Yeah. And so I needed to see the beautiful part of America again. And so my, my little viewfinder, my little half inch viewfinder became the magic window for me to look for the beautiful parts of America. So I got in my car and I drove around the United States and I took pictures and that's how I got into photography. Using his viewfinder to reframe the world, Jim captured stunning images of landscapes and night skies. He has a unique style and says that whether it's a sweeping sunset over Cadillac Ranch or the Blue Swallow Motel, the most important aspect of any picture is how it makes you feel. There's about five to 20 hours of editing time in every photograph. They've been processed. They've been processed and they've been reprocessed and they've been gone over inch by inch by inch. I don't care to show you what I saw. I don't care if you saw what I saw at all. What I want you to experience when you look at this image, this piece of art, and I, I'm more comfortable calling them art and images than photographs, is I want you to experience what I felt. Jim quickly created a name for himself in the photography business, filling up art galleries and selling prints worldwide. But it was after a visit to a coffee shop on Route 66 that he got the idea for a new way to show the beauty of America. There's a coffee shop here in Amarillo, the 806 Coffee Shop, which is right on Route 66. So, you know, you've got a biker sitting there, and I'm not talking like a doctor riding a Harley Davidson. I'm talking about a guy who's got a thick, real knuckle, yeah, thick knuckles and scars on his face. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> and the table right next to him is a soccer mom from Minnesota, and on this table over here is a banker in a three-piece suit. And I'm sitting there thinking, this is really weird. They're sitting here and they're having a conversation and they're not spitting at each other, you know? And so I talked to the, the coffee shop about doing an art show. You just walk up to people while they're buying their, their latte and say, well, I want to take a picture or what? That's exactly what I did. So I did 64 portraits just like these of the people who came into the coffee shop. Every make, color, creed, belief system, economic, you know, homeless to uh, multimillionaire. I thought it was going to be a one-time art show and six months later I had 600 portraits. These days, Jim holds photo shoots where people line up to be a part of the I Am Project. First time you told your husband you loved him? <laughs> Who's next? Black and white photos that capture that quality that makes each and every one of us unique. But it's the answers to Jim's questions that have made this project so eye-opening. Look at this beautiful couple over here. Okay. All right. Where did the whole I am thing come from? I am Jim Livingston and I'm a photographer. Oh, I'm Bob Phillips, I'm a storyteller. There you go. The original art show wasn't gonna have the questions in it. The original art show was just gonna be portraits. But I learned a real valuable lesson really fast. A portrait of a stranger is just a stranger. So unless you've got something to connect, your, connect that person to you, it's kind of boring. I don't care how interesting they look, right? And so that's the beginning of where the questions came from. So that's what where those- What kind of responses did you get? I mean, did some, are, are there some that stuck in your mind that when you read them you went, wow? Yeah, there's a lot like that. I mean, I, I really was surprised at the humor. Um, <laughs> the one that sticks out in my mind the most, this guy, you know, he curls his hands up and he's looking at me and he's looking at me like he's gonna eat my liver. And I'm thinking to myself, well, this is kind of creepy, you know? And then I read his answers. 
I am not a Batman villain. Ha 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 ha. I regret having never made anybody laugh. He 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 he. And before I die, I shall reveal to Amarillo the true identity of Bruce Wayne. He's into comic books. And it, you know, the, his answer wasn't serious, it was funny, but at the same time, it said everything about his interest. Okay, who's next? What about some of the really heartfelt or the maybe melancholy or are there same things that you read that made you just go, oh wow. Um, I regret not spending more time with my children. I regret not telling my dad I loved him before he died. Um, the regrets are the ones that really get you. And one of the things that I think, one of the lessons that I've learned from this, there's a lot of people who regret what they did. Most people regret what they didn't do. Most people regret not making the art, not singing the song, not getting the degree, not, not, marrying the not marrying the love of his life. Yeah, you know, I think most graveyards are the richest places in the world because they're filled with masterpieces that have never been painted. They're filled with novels, you know, Pulitzer Prize winning novels that have never been written. And I, I wanna be wore out. So one of the things that has come out of this for me is I'm traveling Route 66 and I'm taking pictures all over America and I'm living life every single day like it's my last because there's a good chance that it is. Okay, look over here. When was the first time you told your wife you loved her? Oh, the day I met her, I think. Really? I am a warrior of life's storms. I regret being a smoker. Before I die, I want to figure out what this is all about. The responses to the I Am Project have been funny, moving, and sometimes emotional. And each and every portrait gives you a glimpse into the life of someone else, who they are, who they want to be, and a peek at their journey to get there. And Jim's hoping that will make everyone stop and ask themselves, who am I? If you think of any great story, any great story that you've ever read, true or untrue, it's the challenges that we face in life that cause those stories to be interesting. It's those challenges in life that cause us to have character. It's those challenges that cause us to have depth and uh, to have compassion for people who are going through stuff. And so part of what this is, is I want people to read those regrets and reflect. That's what makes this so rich. Look over here. Look straight at me. Perfect, that's it, easy breezy.